Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today I'll show you a 1299 or 120 room crafting guide for 2019. What I'll be covering are the fast and the AFK methods. Here are the basics of room crafting. Well first of all, you have to have a talisman or you can otherwise wear a tiara. For example, an air altar in this case will require an air talisman or an air tiara. For the rest of your inventory, you'll pretty much fill it with pure essence. Since I'm crafting air runes in this case, I have to go to an air altar. Outside the altar, you'll see what is called a mysterious runes, right? Well, now you're gonna enter the runes and then click the stone in the middle in order to craft the runes. You're pretty much gonna go to a bank and then come back. Now running altars itself isn't a fast way to train rune crafting. As a matter of fact, it's very slow, but yeah, I'm here to show you the basics. Moving on, we have the XP boost. Runecrafting early on and up until level 90 is very very slow. Because of this, I do suggest you use your stars and lamps on runecrafting. There are more to list, but these ones are the most common XP multipliers in the game. Let's talk about the useful items. First, I have Wicked Hood. By talking to Tam McGruber, you can actually claim this for free. I marked the location on the minimap in which case, it's just directly east of the Birthrop Lodestone. Normally, in order to enter an altar, you need a talisman or a tiara, right? Well, you can actually use a talisman or a tiara, and then you can store it so you only need the Wicked Hood in order to enter this. We also have the Wicked Robes. By buying this for runespan points, you actually get additional perks added to the Wicked Hood itself. Runecrafting Pouches These are extremely helpful when it comes to crafting runes. Basically, they will store essences. Now unfortunately, you can only use one of each size pouch. In order to obtain them, you can kill creatures in the abyss. The only exception being the massive pouch, however. Every single runecrafting pouch except the small pouch degrades. It can be repaired, however. You can repair this by talking to the dark mage in the abyss, or by talking to wizard Korvac in the runecrafting guild. In order to access wizard Korvac, it does require 50 runecrafting. Here is an entire chart for all the runecrafting pouches. So you might be asking me this question, is Massive Pouch really worth it? The answer is yes, it's absolutely worth it. The next useful item we have is the Unstable Air Rune. You can buy this from the Traveling Merchant. I know it's fairly expensive, but trust me, it's well worth it. As a matter of fact, this is the best way to get runespan points. Master Runecrafter's Outfit By wearing the entire set, it will give you 5% more runecrafting XP. It will cost you 4,000 rune span points for every single piece. We then have the rune ethereal outfit. There are two different ways to obtain. First is a really rare job from Treasure Hunter, which there are no requirements for this. The second method does require 70 rune crafting. You can obtain these fragments by training rune crafting itself. The Law, Death, and Blood ethereal outfits all have the same effects. They retain the effects of not only the Wicked Hood itself but also the Master Runecrafting Outfit and the Mauritania Legs too. That is if you have this in your bank or it's destroyed in Diango. By combining all three of these outfit pieces, you can then form the Infinity Ethereal Outfit. The bonuses are bumped even further. Runecrafting Urns In order to add Pure Essence to the urns, they do have a crafting level requirement. However, it can actually be assisted. You can fill the runecrafting urns by either crafting runes or siphoning anything in runespan. Now depending on the urn type, it will cap at a certain level tier. Now when the urn is full, you can automatically teleport the urns. You just want to enable this option somewhere in your gameplay settings. Essentially, it's supposed to be a 20% base XP boost overall. We also have the urn enhancer. It will boost the XP of teleporting the urns by 25%. Mauritania Legs 2. Of course, it requires the medium Mauritania task complete. Now there's a 10% chance you can craft double the blood runes. We then have the Demonic Skull. Just right outside the Abyss, you can buy this from the Zamrak Mage. He will sell it to you for 550k GP. Whenever you craft runes via the Abyss, you'll get 3.5 times the runecrafting XP. Now, there's a really huge warning with this. By wearing the skull, you're actually attackable by anybody regardless of your combat level. If you're someone that has low HP, you can easily get one shot at by high level players. So you might be asking me this question, does it work on double XP weekend? The answer is yes, but it only becomes 4.5 times the XP instead of 7 times.
times the XP. The next useful item we have are the Abyssal Familiars. These are Beast of Burden Familiars for runecrafting, in which case they will store essences for you. What's really amazing about the Abyssal Titan is that when you summon it, it will actually restore all the runecrafting pouches inside of the Beast of Burden itself. Now, if you were to use this on a legendary pet, it can actually extend this for up to 2 hours long. We then have the Combined Catalyst Fragment. What this item does is that it halves the degrade rate of the runecrafting pouches. On top of that, it will also stack with the Ethereal Outfit. Repair Rune Pouch Whenever you repair a runecrafting pouch, it will make it last 5 times longer. Extreme Runecrafting Potion The potion itself is not tradable, but the ingredients are actually tradable. Just like Overloads, it will last up to 6 minutes. At level 82 or higher runecrafting, you do get a plus 17 boost. Finally, the last set of useful items we have are the Focus Siphoning Auras. What this aura does is that it will increase the siphon success of both the runespan creatures and the runespan nodes. Now obviously, it will cost you loyalty points. I've talked about the basics and the useful items for runecrafting, so let's talk about the training methods. There are two early quests you can do. First is the Rune Mysterious quest, and secondly is the Abyss Mini quest. Both of these quests take around 15 to 20 minutes combined. It will get you level 10 runecrafting. You can also do the Rune Memories quest, in which case, it does take a lot longer. The first set of methods I'll talk about are Rune Span. It is pretty slow, but it's somewhat AFK. So the location is in the Wizard's Tower top floor. If you're wondering where it is, I marked this right on the minimap. By using the Wicked Hood, you do get a direct teleport. Here are the basics of Rune Span. There are three floors in Rune Span. Now, for low level players, you're gonna wanna enter the green portal. When you enter the portal, you'll see a bunch of islands. You want to grab the floating essence, in which case, this will give you 25 essence. You want to siphon either the creatures, or what is called the nodes. Ideally, it's best to siphon the nodes because they will give you more XP. The creatures will actually respawn instantly. For the nodes, on the other hand, they respawn pretty randomly. The creatures, however, will give you extra essence. Unfortunately, you can only grab the floating essence if there are less than 25 in your inventory. You can also travel islands in runespan, although it does require runespan runes. It will take you a couple seconds every single time you travel. When you're leaving runespan, all of the runes will be converted into runespan points. You can also buy runespan runes 10 of each from the wizards right on the entrance. We also have the yellow wizards in runespan, and I will explain later what this means. From level 1 to 33, you'll be doing the bottom floor rune span. More specifically, from level 1 to 9, you'll be camping island 1. This is the first island you'll encounter after you enter the portal. Generally speaking, you'll siphon mostly mine storms and cyclones. The rune span nodes will spawn very, very often here. The XP per hour you can get for this is 15 to 20k. Then from level 9 to 33, you'll be doing island 16. In order to get there, you just want to travel two islands south of the entrance. I marked this on the minimap if you still don't understand where it is. So for the nodes, once again, they also spawn very very often on this island. When it comes to prioritizing because they spawn slightly higher level nodes, this is what you want to do. Vines over fireballs, over rock fragments, over water pools, then mine storms, and finally cyclones. You can get around 30k to 40k XP per hour from this. From 33 to 66, you'll be doing the middle floor. From the bottom floor entrance, you want to travel exactly one island west. Now you're going to climb up the ladder. From the wizard's tower, you can otherwise enter the purple portal, but this requires 50 runecrafting. From 33 to 40, you'll be doing island number 5. It's just exactly one island southwest of the entrance from when you entered from the bottom floor. Only free to play nodes will spawn. There will be two new nodes added, which are Fleshy Growth and the Firestorm. Yeah, you want to prioritize these because they will give you the most XP per hour. Most of the time you will see nodes that will spawn. However, sometimes there might not be a node or two, so you're going to have to siphon the creatures instead. The XP per hour you can get for this is 40k all the way to 50k XP per hour. If you're a free to play player, you have to do this all the way to level 99. From 40 to 66, here are the best islands. I marked this right on the minimap. 
21 and 19 are the best choices. Once in a while, you might want to travel to 23 as well. At this point, you will start seeing pay to play exclusive notes. Traveling the islands here is a little bit slower than usual. The XP per hour you can get for this is 55k all the way to 70k. From 66 onwards, you'll be doing the top floor. You can use the southwest island and then climb the ladder, but there's a much, much easier way. Using a thousand runespan points, you want to buy the portal unlock. Nowadays, you can alternate between high and mid level anytime you want at no extra cost. If you're planning to camp runespan for long term, this is definitely well worth buying. Anyways, from 66 to 90, you'll be doing islands 12 to 16. Now, Island 13 is the most commonly camped one because not only is this a very big island, but it's also very AFK. I think it gives you the best opportunity for nodes to spawn, although sometimes you might not even see a single node. You'll mostly see some mid-level pay-to-play nodes. Alternatively, you can travel Island 14 and 16 because they're actually pretty good for higher level nodes. You'll unlock Blood Pool at level 77 and then Bloody Skull at level 83. You can get around 70k all the way to 90k XP per hour from this. From 90 onwards, you'll be doing two islands. So while the RS wiki suggests like five different islands, I've narrowed it down to two choices. These are the most ideal islands if you want to AFK camp, although they are not the fastest XP per hour in the game. In all of these islands, mostly high level nodes will spawn. Half of the time you might notice that not a single node will spawn in either one of these islands. If that's the case, then you just want to siphon the Soul S Wraith instead. In terms of prioritizing nodes, here's the chart for this. At level 99, you should be able to get around 110 to 120k base XP per hour. Now, I do have a 1 hour footage of this, and I will leave the link in the description. The second main method we have is the Abyss Runecrafting. Yes, it's pretty fast, but it's fairly click intensive. And not to mention, it is somewhat risky because you're going to have to enter the wilderness. When you're entering altars from the abyss, you'll get 2.5 times more XP. Obviously, it does require the abyss mini quests. I highly recommend the following. You want to have some combat stats, okay? So unfortunately, no skillers can do this because you'll most likely instantly die to the abyss creatures. You don't need high combat stats. Now I also suggest you have 25 agility and 25 mining because this way it will make the shortcuts easier to get through. For the abyss, this is the equipment setup for both low and mid levels. You want to bring some armor. Do not, and I mean do not wear demonic skull especially if you have low combat stats. I understand it's level 5 wilderness but anytime someone sees you they can just one shot KO you if you have very very low combat stats. In my inventory, well, you just want to bring runecrafting pouches you can access, and the pure essence as well. Here is a demonstration of an abyss run. With the bank interface open, you just want to right click and then fill the pouches. Now you're going to load the bank preset. Unfortunately, bank presets do not automatically fill pouches itself. When you reach the level 5 wilderness, you want to teleport the Zamorak Mage. Yeah, you should know this by now after you've completed the mini quests. You will get sculled, and your prayer will get drained to zero. Now you want to find either a mining or agility shortcut. If your skill level is very low in mining and agility, you will definitely fail these shortcuts very very often. You want to enter the altar you want to go to. In a minute, I will show you a mini map. Finally, just go ahead and craft the runes. In order to get back to Edgeville, just use either Wilderness Sword 1 or the Amulet of Glory. Finally, just bank and repeat the same process. Now for a low level account, I believe this should take you around 75 seconds every single trip. Here are the leveling methods and the minimap for all the altar locations. Now some of these do have quest requirements. When you compare Abyss at the low and mid levels to Runespan, it's not actually that much faster until you use Demonic Skull. Let's talk about the Abyss for the higher levels. First of all, I do have a full guide on this. You probably wouldn't get access to the ethereal outfit right away, so just go ahead and use the regular runecrafting outfit. At this point, you should start using Demonic Skull because your combat stats would probably be high enough to survive at least a couple hits. Anyways, here are the leveling methods. For death runes, I calculate this as if I'm doing 60 trips per hour. So from 77 onwards, you'll be doing blood runes. 
My calculations assumed at 78 trips in a single hour. You can get from as low as 270k XP per hour all the way to 350k XP per hour if you were to use an optimal setup. The next method I'll talk about is Soul Altar. First of all, I do have a full guide on this. This requires 90 runecrafting and the Fight Club quest complete. You can boost it from 79 runecrafting if you're using an extreme runecrafting potion. In order to optimize this, you do need two bank presets. There are other recommendations, so just feel free to pause the video as I will be moving on to the next section. As I said before, I do have a guide on this, but I'm just going to do a quick rundown anyways. Using the portable fairy ring to Menaphos, you just want to go to the soul altar. Now you just want to deposit the essence and then charge the altar. Now in this process, do not, and I mean do not craft the runes, okay? When you've done this 3 times or 4 times, in which case the altar will reach 100 charges, you will now craft the runes from the abyss. You should know how to get to the abyss at this point. Before you click craft rune on the soul altar, you want to deposit the essence first. When you've done so and you click on the altar, you will get a massive XP drop. You want to recharge the altar and pretty much repeat the same process. So as you can see right here, it is very very AFK. The runecrafting XP per hour you can get for this is a whopping 450k. Yeah, it is just that fast, okay? I've talked about the regular training methods, so let's talk about the other methods. There are so many runecrafting methods that actually profit. As a matter of fact, all these methods I listed here are at least 5 million GP per hour. Now, I do have guides for most of these methods listed, and I will leave the link in the description. The next method I'll talk about are the yellow wizards. Every 10 minutes while you're training in runespan, a yellow wizard will call you. Now, this resets whenever you log out or exit runespan. Now, a yellow wizard every single floor only appears on one of the islands. So in order to find this really fast, you want to right click a blue wizard. You will now see an arrow hint to the wizard right on the minimap. When you find the yellow wizard, you can right click him or her and then they'll tell you the best rune. When you use the rune spend exclusive runes on the wizard, you'll get a lot of runecrafting XP. Obviously by traveling islands, it definitely makes this a lot less AFK. Not to mention that the yellow wizards can teleport all over the place every 5 minutes. Now the Infinity Ethereal Outfit as I mentioned earlier actually will give you 5 daily teleports to a yellow wizard. When you teleport using this and then you give him or her the best rune, you get the option to teleport immediately back to the previous island that you came from. See if you were to do this daily it's really amazing. We also have another distraction and diversion in rune span and this is called rune spears. It will spawn every 2.5 hours. Now I have a tracker for this and I will leave that link in the description. It's different in every world, and so it will spawn on one of the islands in one of the floors. By talking to any wizard, you get to locate the rune spear. You can also hover the icon on the top side of the screen because this way you can see the floor spawn and the phase of the rune spear. By siphoning the spear, you do get what is called the rune dust. Ideally, you want to go for the fire phase or higher because Anything lower than that, you probably wouldn't have enough time to get 1000 rune dust. When the rune spear hits yellow energy, you can now hand in 1000 rune dust per day. This in turn would get you 25k runecrafting XP. Not really amazing at high levels, but this is extremely fast at the lower levels. Runecrafting daily challenge. You will siphon 145 nodes or creatures of either soul, blood, or death. By completing the daily challenge, you will get 33.7k XP every single day. Finally, the last method we have are the Unstable Essence. You can buy a batch of 200 Unstable Essence for 500 runespan points each. Ideally, it's best to use them at level 90 runecrafting or higher because Soul Altar will give you the very best XP. Also, I do highly recommend that you save it on double XP weekend because it will give you massive XP gains. So you have to use them in batches of 10 or more at once. What's really amazing is that it does work with all other XP multipliers including the runecrafting urns. In a single hour you should be able to burn around 60k unstable essence. With all that being said, this wraps up my 1 to 99 or 120 runecrafting guide for 2019. Either way, I wish you all the best training runecrafting. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already because 
I will definitely be doing more 1 to 99 or 120 guides for 2019.